Welcome to Trending Now, where we discuss the latest trends in news, technology, and entertainment. In this special episode, I checked in with Larry King, the king of media himself to find out about his latest projects. We discussed everything from news, to war, to baseball, to Nelson Mandela, and yes, even bagels. First of all, we want to thank you for helping our TV2 class from Happy Saturday to help College. classes, love to do this. Thank you, we really appreciate it. And we're here in your home, in your trophy room, full of uh, showcases. My ego room. Your ego room, okay. Whenever I'm feeling a little low, a little down, <laughs> if I'm wondering what I ever accomplished in life, yeah. <laughs> I walk in here and spend an hour or two amusing myself. Amusing yourself. Well, Saying, who the hell did that? <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Actually, that's what I think all of us thought when we first walked in here. And we, we see baseball, that's uh, for artifacts. the kids. That's for the kids. All the sports <laughs> stuff is for the kids. Well, there's oh. a couple of nice signed stuff here for me and mm -hmm. athletes over the years that have signed things and a lot of awards and stuff. But all most of the sports stuff with the boys. Okay. Do you have a favorite memory out of your uh, lifetime of achievements in broadcast media? Well, when I won the first Peabody Award, which is broadcasting's equivalent of the Pulitzer, the Pulitzer is given in print. Uh, we were the only uh, radio talk show to ever win a Peabody. And instead of winning it for uh, one particular show, we won it for the whole body of work. So it was a real honor to have paved the way to do the first network national radio talk show. And then to get a Peabody Award as the only radio talk show ever to get a Peabody Award uh, for the whole body of work it was a real... That's a huge accomplishment. Real honor. And then I got one for CNN, I got one there too. And then the Lifetime Achievement from the Emmys. Wow. That was a big honor to go wow. to New York and Brian, Brian Wilson presented it oh, to okay. me. It was just, okay. it was really nice. That's a big deal. So, and I, I think I saw that award here behind us. Is that yep. correct? Yeah. Well, they're all here. <laughs> they're all here. <laughs> That's right. There are some uh, that are in storage somewhere. Okay. <laughs> but uh, yeah, they're all here. Okay. And so now you're, you've paved a new path really with your show on Hulu, Larry yeah. King Now. So. We formed a network with Carlos Slim, okay. who's the richest man in the world, and uh, I went down to speak for his. He gives away 12,000 scholarships every year in Mexico City. I went down, spoke for him, mm -hmm. and then he came up here and I interviewed him on my CNN show, and then we had dinner here at the house, mm -hmm. and then I went back and I opened up his, heart, his uh, art museum. Mm -hmm. I was the MC of that, and uh, we struck up a friendship, okay. and uh, he said to me, I can't believe you'd be retired. Yeah. So why don't we do something together? And we formed, and my wife, Sean, had the idea to, to do a kind of network on okay. the internet. So we formed the Aura Network, Aura meaning now okay. in uh, Italian. It's also my wife's middle name. Excellent. Uh, we formed the Aura Network, and we're going to have a lot of shows on it. And the first mm -hmm. one is Larry King Now, which has been on since Larry King. July. So where I paved the way was I, we did the first national radio network show, the first international calling show on cable and now paving the way on the internet. And Hulu is our distributor. What do you like about being on the internet? Is, do you have more freedom than you did on broadcast well, TV? Or? You know, when it comes right down to it, Kelly, it's all who, what, where, when, why. Okay. So ever since I was 23 years old in 1957, I've been asking questions. Right. Now the mode of delivery was different. Yeah. There was radio, television, satellites, now the internet. But what I'm doing mm -hmm. is what I've always done. Is the internet a little more relaxed? Okay. Uh, it's only a half hour show. It's taped, I'm used to working live. Mm -hmm. But other than that, when a person sits down, it's still what I've always been doing. <laughs> Whether I've been doing it all over the world or just interviewing mm -hmm. someone in Miami, I never felt any different than just who, what, where, when, why. Excellent. That's what I did for a living, that's what I'm doing now. So the means of communication, of delivering me, okay. is different. What I'm doing okay. is not different. So how do you prepare? You always look so natural and at ease. Do you... Well, the secret is uh, I don't do a lot of preparation. I, okay. 
all my career, what I, I wanted is uh, some highlight guidelines. In other words, mm -hmm. a little bit about a person's career. I've never been given a question. Okay. I never had a written down question. Okay. I wouldn't advise this to students, by the way. Mm -hmm. What I tell students is, whatever is most comfortable to you, do. What's most comfortable to me is if I'm given too much material, if you lay a whole bunch of things on me, that throws me. I like to be, to find my own way. Okay. But I need some, naturally I need no right. highlights, you know, how right, the senator right. voted on this last bill, what's <laughs> yeah. this guy's last movie. But basically, sometimes the less I know, uh, the better. But I don't okay. say that as advice to someone else. But that's the way I work. So I like, and that probably started by accident. When I started in Miami, I was doing an interview show at a restaurant, Pumpernick's restaurant, and uh, I was only a kid, and I would interview people like uh, visiting uh, conventioneers or okay. people who came into the restaurant. It was mm -hmm. a mid and then one day Bobby Darren, a very famous singer, walked oh, yeah. in, okay. and he walked in out of nowhere, <laughs> and uh, I interviewed him for an hour. Well, I couldn't prepare for him because I didn't know he was coming, mm -hmm. and I got to like that. Mm -hmm. Jimmy Hoffa came and Danny Thomas and Ed Sullivan, and that show kind of caught on. And mm -hmm. one of the things that was the magic of it is. Mm -hmm. We didn't know who was coming. We never booked a guest. They came. And they just showed up. Yeah. People wow. would write books and hand the book up to me. And if I liked the way the book looked, I, so it made me more curious. Oh, okay. So I, that kind of foresaw my, the whole mm -hmm. career. So do people come to you then for your show, Larry now? King Now? Yeah. It's uh, both ways. We call out, they call in. Same way at CNN, same way on the radio, same way doing local television or local radio. It's mm -hmm. half and half. Half we're calling out to try to get guests. The other half, to, you know, if someone's in the movie, they want to come on the show. Mm -hmm. We see someone make news, we want them on the show. So it's, okay. it works both ways. Oh, okay. And you also have a show, Dinner with the Kings. I saw we one. We did that show, yeah, watching, and yeah. we were planning to do more of them, but we had, <laughs> that was a lot of fun show yeah. to do, a disparate was, group, a really eclectic group of really people. It was a really eclectic group. Yeah, yeah. Shaquille O'Neal and Conan <laughs> O'Brien, and it was really a lot of fun. Out of all the people that you've interviewed, is there one person that just left you speechless? No, not spe uh, first, I've done about 55,000 interviews. Yeah. It's the best way to figure it, because 56 years and about 1,000 interviews yeah. a year, including group interviews and panel discussions. And uh, so I've had so many, uh, seven mm -hmm. presidents, uh, a lot of celebrated figures from, you know, famous show business figures to uh, politicians to uh, lawyers, controversial topics. Mm -hmm. So no, no one, quite a, uh, probably Nelson Mandela stands out to me because wow. I regarded him as the most outstanding figure of the 20th century. I don't know anyone who more brave than him. Right. And uh, to be in his presence, uh, but it, yeah, but too many, too, too many. many. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> I go back a long way, and uh, you know I, I've interviewed a lot of people, yeah. so uh, <laughs> nothing nothing jumps out. Now your guests are actually in a tape format, and then it streams live. Do they behave differently than well? You on could you TV, know on the internet you could just... say you could say anything. You yeah. know <laughs> if they curse, we I think we bleep it out if they say curse. Okay. But I don't <laughs> mind cursing. I, words okay. never bother me. No. Uh, I I it's interesting. I see people who get mad at words, but they support violence, you know, like That's war. Yeah. Can't wait so, to go to war. War is stupid. So the meaning behind war. is word, idiotic. Word, yeah. word is not idiotic. Mm -hmm. War is idiotic. Mm -hmm. So I've always felt that way, and I, but I never brought opinions to the show. I always mm -hmm. let, give my opinions to myself. Mm -hmm. But the internet is much more relaxed, and yeah. it's the first time in my life where I own a piece of the show. I know, oh, or I own 20% of Aura. Okay. And uh, so I'm like, I always used to kid about the suits, yeah. you know, broadcasting. <laughs> I'm sure you have them in school, too. We have so, a few of those. Yeah. You know what suits yeah. are. Yeah, yeah, we do. Suits, basically. <laughs> They've been the bane of my existence, yeah. suits. They're tough uh, to deal with. <laughs> well, the best way to do them is ignore them. Mm -hmm. uh, don't listen to what they say. Really put them on the spot. If they give you anything that you want done, write it down. Okay. Just tell them, you know, you want me to do this now. I'm writing this down. So, and they get scared of that because they don't want to be on record. So now I'm a suit. Okay. Well, you know, I own a piece of this network, so I can actually fire people. Mm -hmm. I've never fired anyone in my life, so 
That's unusual for me. It's unusual for me. I'm not an executive type. Mm -hmm. I never was a nine to five right. type. Yeah. I, I always loved, I love broadcasting. I love the career. I like, mm -hmm. I like doing comedy. I like entertaining people. Mm -hmm. I like asking questions. I like, I like the whole ball of wax. Okay. I like communicating. Mm -hmm. And I, if I had a motto my whole career was, uh, I never learned anything when I was talking. Mm -hmm. So that's, that led me to ask short questions, listen to answers, mm -hmm. because a lot of people I see now on television and radio, they just sound off. Mm -hmm. and you, They like the sound of their own voice. Okay. And they use the word I a lot. Mm -hmm. I never used I in an interview. I thought it was irrelevant. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, if you keep that as a byword, mm -hmm. you, I never learned anything when I was talking. Mm -hmm. That would take three quarters of the people off television now. Mm -hmm. What do you think of Piers Morgan then? He, we work very differently. Mm -hmm. He he injects himself a lot. Mm -hmm. I I wouldn't do that, but that's not my style. Right. But I don't knock other styles. Mm -hmm. That's my style. You know, he's got his style. Everybody has their own style. You go to your own style, mm -hmm. and then the whole key is if the public accepts you and longevity. Mm -hmm. Frank Sinatra said to me, "There's a lot to be said for longevity. That's true. If you've been around for 25, 30 years, mm -hmm. and they're still watching you." You're doing something right. Yeah. And now comedy, I think you've done a tour recently. Are you yeah, still I doing love, that? Uh, well, I do it occasionally. Yeah, okay. uh, whenever I am booked to do a speech, mm -hmm. I, I do comedy. Okay. I like making people laugh. Mm -hmm. I like doing conventions. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we have to do serious stuff, but basically 98% yeah. of all the speeches I've ever given, whether doing a comedy tour or speaking mm -hmm. for a convention, is uh, comedy, unless they want something really serious. Right. You know, if we did a technology convention in Seoul, Korea, and I mm -hmm. was the keynote speaker. Uh, that was rather serious, mm -hmm. especially, you know, they all had simultaneous interpretation, so they're all wearing oh, little well, You have to be careful and, then, yeah. what you say, and, and how little, it's Not careful, oh. no, there's nuances, there's okay. nuances in comedy. Mm -hmm. You know, there's certain people. But on the other hand, when I spoke in Mexico City for Carlos, I would say that 90% of that audience spoke Spanish. And I just did shtick. I just did funny stuff, <laughs> and they were laughing right on top of me. So it had to be the interpreter was very good. Because mm -hmm. I would tell a story, and as soon as I hit the punchline, the laughter was right there, and they were all listening in their ear. I was amazed at that. I guess has your audience changed over the years? Uh, I don't know. You know, I guess they, a lot of people grew up with me. I run into people that say they listened okay. to me when they were in school, and mm -hmm. it makes you feel old. Uh, uh, <laughs> Audiences are audiences. The big thing now is youth. Uh, you know that mm -hmm. what everyone wants the younger audience. I've never I've talked to advertising people about that. I guess they have a good answer. The what what everyone wants today is twenty four to forty seven. That group, mm -hmm. hopefully twenty four to thirty five, right. is even better. Mm -hmm. The people in your school, mm -hmm. that's what they want. Mm -hmm. Now, that seems absurd to me because I would say to agencies. Well, the 60-year-old mm -hmm. has more money mm -hmm. than the kid in the school. That's true. And their answer is, the 60-year-old is less prone to change. All advertising is change, mm -hmm. right? That's buy my true. car, buy my yeah. coffee, right? Right, right. You, don't, you have a car. I mm -hmm. want you to use my car. 60-year-olds mm -hmm. don't change cars. Hmm, okay. 25-year-olds change cars. Okay, so that's... And they influence other purchases. So all advertising is designed to make you change. Mm -hmm. I, I'm comfortable. Right. To influence in, you, make influence you buy, me our, to make a buy our product. And so the older you are, <laughs> yeah. the less influenced you are because you, you're less susceptible to mm -hmm. change. And that's what they're looking for, that driving audience mm -hmm. that's younger. So, I mean, so the audience yeah. is younger. But I've always had an appeal with young people. I speak at colleges a right. lot. And uh, I, they, if they know me, a funny story is, when McCain was running for presidency, mm -hmm. uh, I've interviewed probably McCain more than anybody else. Anyway, I interviewed McCain, he's running for president, and we did the interview at the University of Tampa. Mm -hmm. So I flew in, he flew in, and uh, we did it on the campus in a auditorium. And we're walking, <laughs> it was almost embarrassing, by the camp. he's running for president. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and I'm just a schnook, right, walking with him. Okay. I'm going to interview him, we're walking, in, and the crowd is yelling, Larry, Larry, Larry. And McCain says to me, why don't you run? <laughs> and I was shocked at that. You know, all these kids uh, knew me. I think they know me because I've been around so long. 
I don't know if they watch you every night, mm -hmm. but they know you. Okay. I went to a thing called, it's a com comedy con, you know that thing? Oh, yes. Oh, <laughs> Comic Con, yeah, San okay. Diego. <laughs> yeah, I went there last year, and that was extraordinary to me. Mm -hmm. Comic Con is insane. It's huge. Uh, it's in unbelievable. Yeah. And uh, these are all these comic characters and comic mm -hmm. book characters and right. Marvel comics. and uh, San It's the home of San Diego. And I went there to do interviews for Aura. Mm -hmm. Okay. And everybody there knew me, you know. I was walking mm -hmm. along, and these Batman freaks are running along, yeah, and all right. these kids. <laughs> it, was, it, was a, it was a wild experience, and I, I was shocked. I had to be the oldest person yeah. there. It, it's still, I still pinch myself over that, that, that they know you. That you know? they know you, and yeah. So, well, I would think that that demographic watches your show on Hulu. I don't know that Probably seniors more on Hulu find than seniors Hulu are less prone so because yeah. they're just getting used to the internet, right. getting Apple TV onto right. their sets, and. Yeah. Well, that's coming more. Mm -hmm. uh, they they tell me that by mid two thousand fourteen, mm -hmm. almost everybody will have the internet in their television sets. Okay. In fact, everybody. I did a uh, God. I do so many of them. I did a communications conference. In uh, was either Seoul or Lisbon, mm -hmm. in which they told me everything in your life <laughs> next year will be in your in your phone that's incredible on, on your television set mm -hmm. and you will <laughs> this is scary <laughs> see to me it's scary mm -hmm. you will walk into a room and your tv knows what you want to watch it knows you that's remember the book 1984 oh yes in 1984 yeah. was george orwell saying big brother is watching you right right big brother's not watching you yeah. You walk in the room and the television set says, Hi, Kelly. Yeah. Here's this. I don't want to know that. Yeah. I'm, I'm impressed by it. I don't want to know it. it it's no, almost, it's, yeah, it's almost it's impossible true. to you know, fall so much, off the grid, I guess. There's good and bad and everything. <laughs> yeah. You know, a, a philosopher guy told me years ago, I interviewed him, uh, airplanes were good, mm -hmm. right? Right. People get there fast. However, if there never was an airplane, there'd never be an airplane crash. Mm -hmm. More people would be alive. We're all good, comes bad. And there's all, you pay a price. So now we have the internet, we have Twitter, we have mm -hmm. Instagram, right? right? So Twitter, all of that, just solved the crime in Boston. Yes. They pick up those pictures and follow them. That's right, right. yeah. Yeah, so news, see, I guess CNN right. was and it, reacting everybody, to, to what, what was they found picked on up, the and internet. And they had yeah. mistakes. Mm -hmm. Wrong guys were right. picked up, they picked up. Yeah. New York Post, right. Fox, New York Post, terrible era, front page mm -hmm. picture of two people who didn't do yeah. it. These are the, you know, that's the bad part of it. Yeah. And then with all this, there's a quickness to rush to judgment. We rush to judgment. Oh, everything's mm -hmm. wrong. You don't, we don't know what they're doing. And, and I've never done in my career, I've never mm -hmm. rushed to judgment. I have never done that. Mm -hmm. I think it's a mistake, but it's the, it's the novelty and it's what we call progress. That's mm -hmm. where it's at. But it, it, it also solved that murder. It That's also true. caught those That's two guys. That's the good of it, I guess. That's the good of it. Mm -hmm. But I imagine there could have been 15 people in that mm -hmm. crowd to say a married guy who wasn't with his wife. <laughs> yeah. He got divorced because of that. That's <laughs> you true. know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of things that happen when you interfere. I come down on the side of privacy. I, mm -hmm. uh, I'm glad they caught those two guys. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to have myself on camera if I'm walking down the street. Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't think that's, that's anybody's. Yeah. I don't think it's the business of of you to know me. Or I don't want to know. Right. I don't want to. I could never. It's just privacy. I could never uh, tap a phone. Yeah. I could never uh, open somebody else's mm -hmm. mail. I just. It was yeah. The right. That to me. that safe space. That yeah. you would want around you. It's Space just, it's gone. Dis disappeared. Yeah. We talked a little bit about this. How is new media changing news itself? Well, it's, it's, it's yeah. faster. Yeah. I mean, when I was a kid, the news we got was from uh, the newspaper or movie tone news mm -hmm. or the radio. Mm -hmm. uh, when the A bomb occurred, in order for us to see the A bomb, we had to go to the movie theater and it was on the movie tone news. Okay. Uh, when the Vietnam War was on, uh, the tape would be flown home and then you'd see it the next day. Mm -hmm. And now you see war live. It's true. 
Well, Instant. Everything's live. Yeah. And everything, is because of the technology, mm -hmm. everything is immediate. That is, if a big news story happened right this minute, mm -hmm. everyone in the world would know it in the next minute. Mm -hmm. That's, that's so, really scary. Yeah. The, the uh, pace inf is Information increased. gets out faster. Yeah. Judgments are made faster. But it is what it is. You can't mm -hmm. stop progress. And the, e the bad part about it is, Someone work right now is working on a cure for cancer. He's in a lab, and the, and he's investing his and he's searching for that cure to find out this emperor of all maladies, as that book was called. Great, mm -hmm. great book, Emperor of All Maladies, mm -hmm. Cancer. He's discovering that. On the other hand, somewhere else is a guy working on a new weapon. Mm -hmm. Or how can I put a nuclear bomb inside a little case and hide it? from the machine at the airport. That's Somebody's true. working on that too. Yeah, and we used to be can't limited by geography and now it's you kind of, it's you broken down those barriers. That's so they're gonna cure yeah. cancer and someone's gonna blow up a city. Yeah. And you know it's coming. Mm -hmm. And the, the war on terror is insane because it's never gonna end. Mm -hmm. Because yeah, I, I've told us, when you think about it, there's a terrorist born right now. Mm -hmm. And someone is infiltrating his mind with evil thoughts and he's gonna grow up and plan stuff. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if I'd wanna be 10 years old yeah. today. Right. Because you're, you're at the mercy of it. Because mm -hmm. it's, it's coming. It's a war that's unwinnable, like the war mm -hmm. on drugs. Right. Insane, there's no, mm -hmm. you can't win a war on drugs. Do you miss reporting on yeah, these events? Yeah, I miss instant yeah. news. That's one thing I miss, which we don't do enough of, mm -hmm. which we're gonna do more of, because mm -hmm. we got satellites coming now for oh, okay. internet. Uh, I liked instant, I like, I like being in the middle of mm -hmm. action. You know, right. yeah. covering something while it's going on. There's mm -hmm. nothing more exciting. Mm -hmm. When 9-11 happened, I was, I was on for 73 straight nights. I went down to where the bombs, where the planes hit the buildings. I yeah. was there two weeks later. I was at the burn center in New York Hospital. Yeah. Had the fire inspector take me through mm -hmm. the rubble. Uh, you feel part of history, yeah. you know, when you wake up in the morning, you're part of it. You, it's, it's, you you're just, not just watching it, you, then you're reporting You're right, you're, you're in, the, you're in it. the middle. It's a, if you want to do this for mm -hmm. a living, and if your students are mm -hmm. all into this, mm -hmm. you're, you're, it's the world's best career, mm -hmm. uh, because it beats work. Mm -hmm. It isn't really, you know who works? Mm -hmm. Bus driver. Right. A bus driver works. Mm -hmm. You drive a bus on Fifth Avenue, open up the doors mm -hmm. and let people in and let people off and they're dropping in transfers and you close the door mm -hmm. and one buddy's nose. Mm -hmm. You're working your head off. That's, That's a long true. day. Going on the air, mm -hmm. this like this. You're mm -hmm. going to do this for a living, let's say. Mm -hmm. Let's say 10 years from now, Kelly, okay. you're on a CBS station mm -hmm. in Minneapolis. You'll be doing just what you're doing now okay. for nothing. Mm -hmm. They'll be paying you. And it's, 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 it's insane, ain't it? Mm -hmm. You're just sitting and talking. There's cameras here and they're propelling mm -hmm. you out somewhere. You're just sitting and talking. Mm -hmm. They're paying you for that. It ain't work. So if you had to do it all over again? Wouldn't change a you thing. You wouldn't change a thing. No, I would have tried, I started when I was 23. I would have liked to have started sooner. Mm -hmm. Now you have to go to college. I didn't go to college. I never mm -hmm. spent a day in college. Uh, I wouldn't have changed any, all my decisions, career decisions, uh, turned out to be, well, there was luck involved, mm -hmm. but uh, my, the decision to stay with Ted Turner when I could have left CNN, mm -hmm. that was a big day. I almost left. Mm -hmm. I'm glad I stayed. Yeah. Those, the, my career went pretty well. I, I can't knock a career mm -hmm. that lasted this long and made this much of an impact. Mm -hmm. You know, so when I travel overseas and people know you, mm -hmm. it's kind of really weird, it's you know, that you made. Pretty special, yeah. You made, <laughs> you, made, you, made, you wanna, you hopefully you know, made somebody's life a little better mm -hmm. or brought knowledge or made somebody smile. Mm -hmm. Not to be said to that. I love comedians because uh, they make you laugh. Mm -hmm. And when you laugh, a lot of good things happen. Mm -hmm. Did you ever dream of becoming a baseball player? Well, I wasn't good enough, but mm -hmm. I, I would have chucked it all to be a baseball player. In other words, I'd given up everything, all this, mm -hmm. to have been uh, Bobby Doerr. Okay. Second baseman for the Red Sox, played 14 years, okay. hit 280. All right. And the Dodgers? Dodgers, yeah, I could have. I would love to play for the Dodgers. <laughs> But um, there's no career yeah. like the career of a major league ball player. Um, one, because it's a confounding game. Mm -hmm. Nobody ever hit 500. You can't master it. You learn failure. Mm -hmm. My boys played a terrific game today and they lost. Mm -hmm. 
They were sad today. Mm -hmm. I was sad for them. And they'll lose again. Mm -hmm. You, If you're a fan, you will always lose. Mm -hmm. And that's part of the magic. Like sports fascinates me because it's so unimportantly important. In other words, if the Dodgers win tonight, mm -hmm. it will not change my life one iota. Nor if they lose tonight. Mm -hmm. Yet, I will be happy. I will feel better if they win. I will mm -hmm. be depressed if they lose. Mm -hmm. That's, the, that's the, the charm of sport. And another thing, I feel sorry for people who aren't sports fans. Mm -hmm. Because when the sports fan wakes up in the morning, right. he doesn't know who's going to win. There's, some, you know, there's basketball, yeah. baseball, <laughs> hockey. I don't know who's going to win. So her, That's the fascination yeah. of it. Your life and confidence can be wrapped up well, in sure. a team if you love your team. So. There's a new book out <laughs> on why people are fans. Mm -hmm. Fan is short for fanatic. Right. Why, are, why are we fans? It's mm -hmm. a city we grew up in. We make an emotional attachment to the city. We never lose the attachment. I've never mm -hmm. lost my attachment for Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. I left Brooklyn, but Brooklyn never left me. Mm -hmm. uh, earlier this year, uh, the Wall Street Journal invited me to go up and go to a Brooklyn Net basketball game at the new arena in Brooklyn, the Barclay Arena. Oh, so wow. it was like, I'm returning home. Right. And everybody applauded, and every night they yeah. did a whole story, and it was just home again. You it know? is home. Well, I think you brought a little piece of home here to Beverly Hills. You have a bagel shop, right? In yeah, Brooklyn Water Bagel. Brooklyn. Uh, I'm their spokesman. It's a, mm -hmm. it's a national chain. It's franchised. And I own a nice piece of the Beverly Hills one and a small piece of all the others. And we okay. got uh, 22, I think, now. Wonderful. Just opened in Boston. Okay. And they're great bagels. They're, it's close to the water. They make the water at the location. Okay. And the best water in the world is in New York City. I don't know, I know why that is, by the way. I learned little things over the okay. years. <laughs> why does New York City have the best water? In fact, I had two professors on from Harvard mm -hmm. who work in the area of water and water how water moves. Sure, and, yeah. And uh, they compared New York water to Evian, and you couldn't tell the difference. Now, Evian came from natural springs, and New York water comes from a faucet, right? They couldn't tell the difference? With, no. Oh. And they measured and couldn't tell the difference. And hmm. the reason is, when New York City, the best city in the world, mm -hmm. when New York City built its waterway system, it used copper, and copper doesn't rust. So as the water comes down from mm -hmm. the mountains in New York, from the various mountain chains that bring the water in, mm -hmm. they flow through copper, and therefore there's less chemicals. So the flavor's different the, from... Oh, oh yeah. Okay. When you drink New York water out of a faucet, it tastes better. Hmm. So what we try to do at the bagel store mm -hmm. is ape that by making the water. And the water makes the biggest difference in bagels mm -hmm. and pizza. So, well, we want to thank you today. This Kelly, was so informative. My pleasure. I wish you all the students and, yeah. at school, wish you a lot of luck. Okay. And remember, which I say to all communication students, mm -hmm. one, ne if you really want it, mm -hmm. never give up. There's always an opening. If someone can talk you out of it, mm -hmm. don't go into it. Okay. Because if I can say to you, it's going to be tough, Kelly. <laughs> the road's going to be hard and you'll be turned down a lot. And you say, yeah, I don't want Don't go in because the competition is fierce. Mm -hmm. Because I used to, when I was on CNN, 100,000 people wanted that job. Mm -hmm. So, But there's always an opening. If you got talent, the door will open. The door will open. So just keep and going. The, the next <laughs> bit of advice, and you're mm -hmm. very good, because okay. you have ease, camera likes yes. you, you're very pretty, that's, you. that's a head start, mm -hmm. is, and this is important, the only secret <laughs> is there's no secret. Be yourself. Okay. Don't try to be anyone else. Don't try to imitate anyone else. Just be you. If you is good enough, you're going to make it. If it okay. ain't good enough, it ain't good enough. That's it. <laughs> Just be you. It's the soundest okay. advice I ever got. Arthur Godfrey, a great broadcaster years okay. ago, gave it to me. He said, just be yourself, kid. Okay. It's going to work or it ain't going to work. All right. Well, that, I think that's good advice for all of us. Good so luck, thank Kelly. you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Good luck, students. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you, thank you guys. Well, that was, uh, yeah. that was the rehearsal. Okay. We hope you enjoyed our conversation with Larry King, a man who has had an exceptional career and became a legend himself by interviewing legends. A humble and grateful man, he opened his heart, life, and home to Saddleback TV students, and he reminded us all, 
If you want to make it in the business, just be who you are. We hope you enjoyed this special episode of Trending Now. Thank you for watching.